Oh, that's right. This afternoon, it is 4.06 in the afternoon. It is time for Meet Me at the Diner. And today, my very special guest is Dr. Dan Flint, who is the Executive Director of the Greater Greenwood United Ministry right here. I tell you what, they do so many great things. They help so many people in crisis. And they also need your help, though, whether it's volunteering or being part of the 15th Annual Medicine Chase, which is coming up the end of April, April 27th to be exact. So how are you doing today, Dan? I'm doing great, Ann, and uh, thank you for allowing me to be here and to share information about Greater Greenwood United Ministry. Absolutely. Well, you know, y'all do so many good things here in the community, and you just look at if there wasn't an organization like the Greater Greenwood United Ministry, how would so many people be surviving in today's world? It would be very difficult for them, very honestly. Uh, just uh, like today, for example, as far as our free medical clinic as we had this morning and, and the course crisis ministry this morning, some of these people would be in dire trouble. And, uh, you know, we had friends that stopped by and was telling us about, you know, people that they know that have fallen in the cracks or have lost their insurance. And, and so that's why we're there. We're there to help them and to help them to uh, grab a hold of life uh, more normally than just because uh, some people just say, what would they do? And well, that's why we're there. We're yeah. there to help those people that are in real trouble. Absolutely. And one of the most interesting things about United Ministry is that you get no federal funding. Is that that right? is correct. Yeah. And, it, and as a result, that's one of the reasons why we claim we're a ministry. And we have the great privilege of dealing with people, helping them physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Uh, you know, it's really a nice thing to have out front. We, we can post the Ten Commandments. We have Bibles out there. We have tracts out there. So that's, and many times, just like one of our doctors last week, a patient, I was talking to one of our patients, and uh, he said, well, Dr. So-and-so began to talk to me about my spiritual life. And we like, you know, that sounded great to me. I was thrilled by it. Sure. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a great opportunity for us to help people in so many different ways because, we're such a multifaceted ministry. There isn't another ministry out there that's as multifaceted as we are in all the areas that we help people. Sure. And, you know, you are the, uh, if somebody is, has rent or electricity or all these things, you help cover on an emergency type basis. Absolutely. Uh, you know, if people's electric's going to be cut off, we're going to be there. If their rent, they get an eviction notice, we're going to be there to help them. If they need food, uh, we're there to give them and provide food for them. Other areas where we help on that, what we call the crisis ministry side, because we have three functions coming out of Greater Greenwood United Ministry. That's the crisis ministry, the free medical clinics, and the dental care ministry. And of course, on that crisis ministry side, it's utilities, <coughs> rent, food, eyeglasses, temporary shelter for homeless people where we'll put them up for a day or two, depending upon their need and situation. Uh, we can provide them with clothing. We have a uh, a, a situation where we can get them free clothing if they need clothing. We have homeless people sometimes that get into trouble or we have people that get burned out. And we also have some furniture in our warehouse. We'll give them free furniture. So there's so many different areas. And the other thing too, Ann, is that we have been there so long and our people know what's going on in this community. So if we can't help them, we know where to refer them. Sure. And, you know, and that's terrific. Um, I think that the, the very fact that it's not just um, a food, it's medical, it's all these other aspects, the eyeglass, and perhaps the most unusual is the dental, to have the dental aspect part of it. Yeah, there isn't anyone around that has that free dental care ministry like that we do. And so it's primarily for extractions only, but uh, the, the nice thing is right now that as we do the interviews on these patients and pull in all the information, we have volunteer dentists throughout the community. And so consequently, we have an individual that once they're in the system, they're registered, we've extracted the information, they'll call the dentist, make an appointment, and allow these, you know, for these people to go visit our volunteer dentist. And many of them are so gracious and benevolent, even though it's for primarily extractions, I know of very many stories where they've gone over and above that and have taken care of them for other dental needs. Sure. So these are some of the wonderful things. Now, United Ministries, I presume that means it's a bunch of churches coming together to work with this? Well, that's correct. That ministry was founded with 17 churches. And, and actually, in its uh, corporate charter, it's owned 
by the churches, the member churches, and that's what we claim is we are owned by a congregation of churches here in Greenwood. Now that has expanded to about 43 churches now that uh, wow. give to and support Greater Greenwood United Ministry. Obviously some of those are very small churches, but anyway it's a better opportunity for them because they do not have the staff to minister to people that call their churches. And so we do we do all that for them. Actually, we're just an agent for these member churches in the sense that we have systems in place and that we can read these patients and clients and know exactly what's going on. And also, too, we help prevent duplication, help keep people from running from church to church. Uh, and that's, that's one of the reasons why they formed it. They, they wanted that united area or ministry, if you will, to be able to do the work for them just simply because, again, they can't tr keep track of everybody. They don't have the staff to take, have the records that they need to have on people that repeat and so on and so forth. Well, it is tremendous the amount of effect. Now, <clears throat> one of the things over the last couple of years I know it's been very difficult because so many of the churches have been um, having less donations to be able to do this. That, that's very true. We, we went through a real down period here a couple of years ago and it still hasn't totally recovered where some of the churches had to cut their budgets because the economy had hit them. And as a result, they've never, came, they've never come back to the levels that they originally were giving prior to that. And so there again, that's just one more of our challenges, but it, it's, it just with everything else that goes on between the churches, uh, the or business organizations, the community and personal donations, uh, we, of course, have been able to increase our budget the last two years where we had to cut our budget, or it year, was actually uh, two years ago. And uh, But this year we have a healthy budget. We think we'll be able to meet it. But on the other hand, it's going to take a lot of work on our part to reach out and, and have a good success with our medicine chase. Hopefully the churches will continue to maybe pick up a little bit of their giving throughout the year, and uh, maybe more personal donations will come in for us. So. Uh, we go out a lot on faith. I mean, that money is not in hand, and so you go out a lot on faith. I like that, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> it is a United Ministries minister, so uh, a lot of faith going on there. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, um, we're going to be talking a lot more about all the different aspects here. I believe, I think we're going to find that even more people are being served now. So when we come back after a word from our sponsors, you stay tuned. Hey, if you've got a question for Dr. Dan Flint, don't hesitate to call us, 229-7984. That's 229-7984. Oh, I don't know what's getting to me this afternoon. Must be some pollen or something here, but <clears throat> I apologize, Dan. I'm a little scratchy here. <laughs> yep, that's all right. But... Um, you know, one of the things that we were, we were talking about when we were off air just a few minutes ago was you're seeing an increase rather than a decrease in the number of people needing the services of United Ministries. Yes, and on both sides of the, uh, where we, we help people the most in the crisis ministry and the free clinics and even the dental care ministry, all those numbers are very high. They're in the plus 40% versus last year. And, Plus 40% uh, over last in year? In every, every area that we've helped. Uh, for example, this past year, the dollar value of uh, medicines that we gave out was over a half a million dollars. It was 500, well, actually $503,000. Uh, we gave out and dispensed 6,700 prescriptions, uh, almost 1,800 patients on that free medical clinic side where I think last year we ran around 1,200. And uh, dental for the patients, whole year. For the whole year, and yes. And this is just, well, three months into. In, into this year, our numbers <laughs> are up as well. I think I just mentioned to you earlier while we were just talking across the table, uh, when I did my numbers for January and February in the crisis ministry, uh, we had a 46% increase in finances and numbers of people that we helped on the crisis ministry side. And so uh, I don't have the specific numbers just yet for the free clinic, but there were a since we opened up that new clinic, free clinic on Monday here in January, our numbers are up considerably on the, you know, for patients at the free medical clinic. Now, what do you think as far as the effect of 
what's going to be coming with the mandated health care. What do you think there's going to be the effect on your numbers and what you're doing, Dan? We, we've talked about that quite a bit, and even with our board members, and for the present time and even for the near future, we really don't see any dramatic change. We'll continue to see probably increases until this thing shakes out. Uh, you know, there's just a lot of controversy about it, a lot of confusion about it. Uh, you know, we belong to the South Carolina Free Medical Clinic Association, the National Free Medical Clinic Association. We sort of get direction from them, but we do not see a slowdown anywhere in the near future as far as helping people with our free clinic situation where we are. Wow. <clears throat> that's, that's phenomenal, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You would think that things might be getting better, but they're really not as far as from what you're seeing. So far, nothing has changed. Our increases are there uh, on the horizon until they get things ironed out and get things communicated properly. Uh, people just, you know, they know where to go now for their safety net and their refuge. And that's, that's the free clinics when they do not have any resources uh, for health care and medicines. Well, you know, thank goodness that you're there because uh, it would be really tough for people out there if they didn't. But, you know, another part of this is where would you be if you didn't have your volunteers helping uh, triage, shall we say, the people that come in the doors there? Well, it, it would really be difficult because, you know, from a budget standpoint of view, we could not afford to pay the staff to minister to all the people that we minister to, especially in our free clinics. I mean, you're talking about a lot of professional people. And, uh, you know, you're talking about doctors, you're talking about pharmacists, you're talking about lab technicians, uh, again, nurses of, of different calibers. Uh, and, and, of course, pharm our pharmacists, uh, we're really blessed there. We have a partnership and with Presbyterian College where we have a couple pharmacists, well, actually three pharmacists are coming over and working on Tuesday afternoons taking care of our, uh, a pharmacy position while that free medical clinic is open on Tuesday afternoon. Uh, not only are they very polished, skilled staff people, Presbyterian College pharmacists, but they're also teachers. And so the program that we worked out with them to get them to help us is to train their pharmacy students. So our ph we have pharmacy students over there on Tuesday afternoons, and they also come in on Thursday evenings. So not over the years we That's have been... That's a win-win situation, oh, isn't it? Oh, it's a beautiful situation. Uh, over the years, we've been a training ground for the nurses at, at uh, Piedmont Technical College, a training ground for nurses at Lander University, and of course now we are a training ground for uh, uh, pharmacy students uh, coming out of Presbyterian College. And that's and, a relatively new program over there. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. and, and I have been over there and visited their complex, and boy, everything is, is really, uh, it's upscale, it's modern, the building is a beautiful building. Uh, the students that we're dealing with are very articulate young people, They're very, very intelligent young people. And so it's been a real pleasure dealing with them and having them to work in, in our, our pharmacy and to hear them too as they give prescriptions. They're right there being you know, taught by the pharmacist. They're being guided by the pharmacist. And so I get to hear them give medicine to our patients and talk about well, these take it before you go to bed. You know, these kind of giving the direction it needs to be given. Sure. And so uh, that's a unique thing for us to be able to participate in, and there's a great amount of joy because it, it's so valuable to us since we just function with all volunteers. Oh, absolutely. Now, one of the other things is medication. It's not gotten any cheaper over the years, has it? Uh, no, it hasn't, and uh, that again, uh, we're just finding the increases as we write checks for those bills for the medication that we have to pay for. We you still used to, get, used to get a lot of samples. You don't get as many now, do you? We do not get the samples that we used to because of restrictions and government control, and so a lot of the doctors' offices and people used to give to us and, and the, uh, the centers, medical centers, just have sort of it, it's not completely diminished, but it has diminished tremendously. Uh, the other part is, too, it's gotten more challenging to get prescription medicine from the pharmaceutical companies because that's always been our main source of getting medication is these patients come in and our doctors, you know, assess them and give them, uh, if you will, a particular diagnosis. And then we take that information and send it to pharmaceutical companies and then they give us the medicines free. Uh, in, interestingly enough, uh, a lot of pharmacies uh, or pharmaceutical companies have cut back on what they get 
Also, too, uh, we have to pay for the generic medicines. In a lot of situations, everything is switched to generics. So that's why our medical costs on an annual basis has gone up. And you used to get a lot of these for free. Absolutely. I mean, you know, things I, have changed. Yeah, it's exactly. a different world out there. We have to adjust to it, and uh, we feel that you know we're doing very well as we adjust and look at things, and uh, you know, just sort of factor in our needs as we look at a year in advance as to where we're going to be. Sure. So, those are some of the challenges that you're dealing with. Not only uh, not only with the medical, but in the um, you do have a relationship, I understand, with CPW and Duke Power. Uh, we do not with Duke Power. Oh, okay. uh, we do with CPW. Uh, and the interesting thing is taking place there. They have been so gracious over the years and have what is called the CPW Care Dollar Program. And uh, we are the agent to dispense those dollars that they give to us. For example, uh, if the CPW customers say somebody donates $100 to their care program, they match that $100 and then we get that $200 to give to their clients. And so, but the thing of it is, the past two years, even though they've budgeted several thousand dollars, it's been so warm that uh, you know, the, the money hasn't been as great as it has in the past few years. And so uh, that's been another thing that we've had to adapt to. But we still, they, we still love working with them. Uh, they have a lot of confidence in us for us to be their agent. And uh, because they know, uh, we give, you know, whoever we give that money to, they, not, they have the name, the account number, and everything else. So every penny that they give us goes right back to CPW customers. You know, <clears throat> you know, Dan, I think one of the things that a lot of people may not know is it's not easy. It's not just come in the door and get a handout for United Ministries. It doesn't work that way. Not for us. Right. I know... Uh, <laughs> You know, I've been challenged over the years. I've been there several years, and a lot of even our member churches have said, okay, Dan, what are you guys doing cutting to cut down on fraud and misuse, <coughs> misuse of the system? And, of course, we put systems in place to where, you know, when people come in to us, we pull a lot of information from them so that we can check the validity of their request. And then we also have a, they have to sign an authorization form that we can follow up and call the utility company or their landlord or anybody we want to call. So, but our, our objective behind all that, Ann, is not to play a cop role, but to help them make better life decisions, to help them give them a hand up and not a hand out. Uh, I, you know, I'm also a trained a professional counselor, and so you know, I, I'm not big on enabling and rescuing bad behavior. And so consequently, uh, you can't expect people to do that which they do not know or see clearly. So it's our job to point out to them opportunities as to how they can help themselves as they move on down the road as far as life is concerned and making better decisions. Absolutely. But I think that's very interesting because so many agencies just give and don't have any qualifications back. Yeah, and I think that's unfortunate, and as a result of that, I do know some organizations in town that will not give to some agencies because they don't have that accountability in their system. And we've also had the expression given to us that that's why we give to you, because the same thing as I was just talking about CPW. Uh, they like the way we do things, uh, how we keep track of things, uh, as well as several business organizations say, we know that you are doing the best you can to get the money to the people that really need it. And that's actually a quote from a major business leader here in this town uh, that came to us. Sure. Well, it makes a difference, doesn't it? You want to know if you're giving something that it's going to a good cause. Absolutely. Uh, you know, we're, we're that way personally. I'm the same way. You know, uh, when I'm giving something, I want it to have an, be effective and uh, to help people in the right way. I don't want them to squander it. I don't want them to blow it away, so to speak, or let it get down the tubes. Uh, I want them to uh, help them you know, build them up, lift them up, uh, point them towards uh, better life decisions. Absolutely. And so many people have benefited by what you all have done over there at United Ministries, and I know so many more will benefit from it. When we come back, we're going to talk more. We're going to also talk about the medicine chase. It's a 5K run or one-mile walk that's coming up on Saturday, April 27th, right there in Uptown Greenwood. Hey, you stay with us. Froggy here and Executive Director Dan Flint will be right back. Um, are you a pirate or a pack rat? 
Do you have a vacation of a lifetime sitting in the attic? Or a college tuition hung on a wall? Or is a fabulous retirement hidden in your jewelry box? Bring those items to Sharp Facets Gallery. We can establish value and buy from you or sell for you. And so ends another chapter at Sharp Facets Gallery. 72 Bypass and on the web, sharpfacets.com. That's right. We're back here. Froggy Ann Eller and Executive Director Dan Flint from United Ministries. Gosh, we had several calls come in while we were talking this afternoon, Dan. Uh, let's see. Uh, Janice Sanders said, thank God you still have community and faith-based outreach. Do you take donations other than cash? She has a hospital bed, etc., and some things like that. Yes, we do. Okay, so what would she do? Well, basically, could just contact the ministry, and, and we have a warehouse down on Maxwell Avenue where we put furniture and different things that uh, you know people want to donate to us. And I have a gentleman that manages that. And so what I do is just contact him. If somebody calls us and says, hey, look, I've got chairs, or I've got this, or I have that, and I'll just call him and say, okay, here's the person. You contact them and make arrangements to get that fixed up and put in our warehouse. Wow, that's great. So you do have even pickup service. Yes, we do. That's great. So what would be the number to call for United Ministries? Uh, of course, our general number, overall number, is 942-0500. Okay, 942-0500. Okay. So, uh, Janice, if you've got items to donate, just please give them a call, 942-0500, and they'll hook you up with the right place to, uh, to help you get those donated. That's a terrific thing, Dan. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, <clears throat> gosh, you cover all the, all the bases there. Uh, next comment, Jack Wiegman. Average direct cost on determining and writing a prescription, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield says, is $84. Eighty-four dollars times fifty-seven. That's four hundred and seventy-eight thousand of community value. <clears throat> wow, that's huge, isn't it? Yes, it is. It is. So <clears throat> you just don't realize how the dollars add up, do we? We but we look at these um, community like uh, United Ministries out there and all the other things that are out there to help people. The benefit is huge. Yeah, people don't realize it uh, because you know we're a volunteer operation. But our value to the community, when you put all the medicines, uh, you know, we we do not put a dollar amount on the food that we receive or anything of that nature. But we also another thing too, and have a referral system, where if uh, patients come in, maybe they need some surgery or something of this nature, we refer them to some particular doctors that does this pro bono, as well as sometimes the hospital. The hospital will take care of it. And so last year, there was almost $400,000 in this referral area. When you add that to the medicines and all the other things, and we like to say we don't put a value on the doctors that are there, the nurses that are there, the pharmacists are there. So again, we're, we're well over a million and a half dollar value to our community, or maybe even more. Wow, that is phenomenal. Well, Jack Finch called in. He says, can you send your business model to our legislatures and the president? I would love to <laughs> if they would listen. Yes, well, there you go. That is the biggest part, isn't it? The listening part. Yes. They don't seem to hear very well. You know, the effect of, of this on the community is huge, and that's why United Ministries is such a big part of our community. Not to underestimate all the other medical and issues that are being helped out there, from the food bank to the soup kitchen, all of these come together to really help those that cannot help themselves and need a what should we say? A hand out and a hand up. Well, the hand up is where we try to be. And, and uh, we just try to keep people, uh, make them make better life decisions and help them where they're in crisis and to help them through their need. Absolutely. So, um, but the medicine chase, this is a big, big, big event. It's been going on for uh, 14 years. This will be the 15th year coming up Saturday, April 27th. What can you tell us about it, Dan? Well, it's, it's a... Uh, it's our one and only annual fundraiser, and it's a big one for us because we hope to generate uh, a great deal of money with it. Uh, of course, the primary uh, proceeds that come from that go to buy medicines and medical supplies. Uh, the thing that we've done over the years, or the past few years, is professional. We hire professional people that come in and handle this thing from the get-go. 
uh, obviously I have Donna Trapp behind the scenes that does the, the, the if you will, the <coughs> guiding and the directing, but these professional people just take it over. The other thing, I can't believe you can keep Donna behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> she likes to get out there and get in the mix of it. She really does. She's a very creative person, and, and uh, I just love when she grabs a hold of something and takes off with it because you, you know the outcome is going to be a good one when it comes to taking care and helping people and guide people and having, you know, getting people to where they have fun as well as getting people to contribute. Sure. But, but the real positives of the Medicine Chase, too, is not only what it raises the funds to buy these critical things we need, but the other thing that I have enjoyed over the past few years is the energy that is there every, every year that we have the Medicine Chase. It's a time of excitement, a time of people come and they fellowship and, and uh, not only do they come, some are very serious about the race, some are very serious about the walk, but then there's those that just want to come and fellowship and have fun and be a part of the, what is taking place. And, and it's an exciting time. It really is. And we, we just have a lot of fun with it. Absolutely. And that's coming up uh, Saturday, April 27th. It actually starts at 9, but registration is at 8 o'clock in the morning. So, um, you know, when you talk about it being a large fundraiser, what kind of dollars have you expected in the past, Dan? Yeah, we, we've always had a very high goal of, say, we're trying to raise 25000 But if we can, you know, where it's come out and shook out after we sort of netted out is around 15000 but again, that's critical to us. That's big money to us. So we just keep shooting for you know, setting our goals and going after them. And we think, I was talking to Donna earlier this, this afternoon, and right now with our sponsorships, these are the people that come up front and give money. And, of course, we put their logo on the back of our T-shirts and things like this. So far, we've exceeded last year. So by the time we have the individuals come in and finalize registration and people that finalize the registration come in that morning, uh, we're looking for a little bit bigger year this year than we had last year uh, on the outcome of our medicine chase. Well, I think people realize the need, and any time there is a need here in Greenwood, it always seems like people come through for it. Well, that's where it is. You know, I've, I've always said, uh, due to a lot of our business uh, uh, people in town, that Greenwood is a very giving town. You know, I, I worked for General Mills and lived in a lot of different metropolitan areas and have never experienced the kind of giving that I've experienced here in Greenwood. Exactly. And it, it's a real blessing. And the other thing is, too, and I think, too, for many, many years, a lot of people have driven by our building and uh, they said, boy, I didn't know you did all that. When they finally hear what all we do, how multifaceted we are and how we try to help people and care for people in so many different areas. And so uh, we've gotten that information out more and more. And, of course, thank you to people like yourself and, and your station here that has just been a blessing to us to help us get our message out there about helping people. Absolutely. Well, you know, it's so important for people to know what happens there. And all the doctors and all the nurses and just, uh, regular people volunteer help, help out there, too. Now, don't you um, have a need for volunteers if someone is interested? We always have need for volunteers. And, and, of course, with the growth that we have, you know, I, I got a list from Donna. You know, she <laughs> has on the medical clinic side, we have receptionist duties. We have intake worker needs. We have data entry needs. Uh, we also have, uh, like for Monday, we still have volunteer pharmacist needs to alternate in and out. And a couple other times we have the pharmacy. And then doctors on Thursday night, uh, we're working the ones that are normally volunteering very hard, and we need some additional doctors out they there. They need some respite from that. I'm telling <laughs> you. Uh, so in the crisis ministry area, too, I've got some people that uh, are going to be uh, actually moving to other areas, so I have needs coming up facing me for intake workers over in our crisis ministry. And these are people like Donna has for intake workers and I have for intake workers. Uh, where they sit down and talk with the clients that come in, the patients that come in and pull information from them and get them set up into the system or help make decisions as to how we're going to help them. You know, are we going to help them on the utility bill or the rent bill? We're going to give them food. Are we going to help them with eyeglasses and different things? So, uh, yes, we need volunteers. I hope that uh, people will listen and consider coming up and being part of a great ministry 
And I guess people. you could be flexible with people's hours and everything, Abs correct? Absolutely. You know, for the most part, we're only talking about six hours a month. I mean, we have a month. A, wow. We, we we have tremendous lists of volunteers, but like for most of the intake workers, now for the intake workers for the medical clinic, I need them once a week. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe three hours a day. For our crisis ministry, most of all of our volunteers work every other week three hours a day. So wow. we're not talking about a lot of time, but it is critical time and valuable time, and uh, it doesn't overwork some of our other volunteers. I do have some volunteers that work on a weekly basis. You know, like I've got uh, on Tuesday mornings, we've got several that just you know, come every Tuesday morning. And then we have others, like I say, they rotate in and out. But we keep a schedule, and but we do need volunteers. Please consider coming and volunteering to help people in crises. Absolutely. Hey, we're here with Dan Flint. We're going to be right back. Don't you go away. Oh, that's right. We're right back here, and Gracie has a few questions for you, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> she likes to get involved here in the procedure. So, um, you know, we were talking about all the good stuff that y'all do there, but one of the things we hadn't discussed was how for some people this is a continuation process. For example, for diabetes and diseases like that as far as your medical ministry. Yeah, uh, and we've been the medical home for many people and of course a lot of our patients, one of our biggest costs is for insulin. And not only do we, are we there, but let me just sort of give you the procedure of what takes place so people can understand. When people come in and see our doctors uh, or our medical provider, uh, that medical provider, you know, checks them out and examines them, and they'll maybe he'll he or she will write several prescriptions. They're filled that very day. Do our volunteer pharmacists are usually right there in the in-house pharmacy that we have, and then as a result, once those medications are gone, they've used them up. Then we have a Tuesday morning where we have a refill program where they come in and get their refills, and so as a result of that, again, we have become the medical home for many, many people that they just don't have any place else to go and don't have the resources. And so the other thing that we've gotten several things uh, that we put in place is, is because of the consistency of some of our doctors and one of our, our medical providers is that constant reviewing. Say Thursday nights uh, where we have volunteer doctors, when we initiated that, these are doctors that rotated. Maybe a patient may not see the same doctor for a long time or even see the same doctor where now we have two day, three days a week where this patient can see the same doctor or medical provider and get that consistent care and reading. And for example, we also have uh, one of our pharmacists out of Presbyterian College comes in and does counseling on medications. In other words, if a person is given an antidepressant, uh, she'll review their pharmaceutical record and give them counseling is where they need to be and then make recommendations because she's not only a psychologist but she's also a pharmacist, she will make recommendations maybe upping the milligrams or something of that nature for a particular antidepressant or something of that nature. So uh, with also too the reading that we have on people to really check them on their insulin, that's always been a critical area and a critical need for people and so we you know, we have the systems in place and we have the procedures in place to where we can read patients on an ongoing basis to be sure that they don't fall in the cracks or they end up you in trouble. Well, well, it is amazing what all you do over there. But, um, <clears throat> Dan, let's see, how long have you been doing this job? Well, <laughs> Executive uh, <laughs> director. <laughs> uh, I started in January of 2001. And, uh, so that's like 12 years, Dan. I was just planning on staying there about three years, but I tell everybody that the Lord has decided to keep me there all this time. And uh, people keep asking me when I'm going to retire, and I always say, well, I'll probably go this coming January, but I've been doing that for a little over seven or eight years. <laughs> so uh, to settle it all out, I'm just going to stay there as long as I feel that I'm led to stay there. I have to agree that I have had tremendous blessings while serving as the executive director. Director, I've had, uh, I guess, the great privilege of meeting some of the greatest people, and, and because we're a ministry and because we're faith-based, and that's the environment we live in and work in, I've met some real spiritual giants, and some of them have gone home to be with the Lord. And so, uh, but it has just been a pleasure to be there to help people and to work with some of the people that we get to work with. And uh, it's just a great joy. 
Well, I tell you what, depending on what happens with Obamacare, you could be seeing a lot more people. <laughs> <laughs> they say it's the answer, but a lot of people say they really don't know whether it is. So it's, it's got to be it's got to be tough kind of being in that position where you're seeing so many more people and you've got to raise that much more money. It's a it's a constant pressure, isn't it? Yeah, the story, the, the, I, I just say that the jury's still out on the Obamacare situation. And like I say, with the... Uh, we belong to the South Carolina Free Medical Clinic Association, the National Free Medical Clinic Association. We get our readings from them. But we don't see anything on the horizon right now for the next two or three years that's going to slow us down. And that's why we went ahead and, and moved and put in our new free medical clinic on a Monday morning because there's a need out there right now. And some people are just, they're just not being taken care of. But we are now have positioned ourselves you know, to take care of more people. And that's what we're trying to do. That's, you that's know, wouldn't, it be a, wouldn't it be a great thing if the service wasn't needed? That would be a great thing. It's not going to happen, but no. wouldn't it be a great thing if it was? That's yeah, right. It certainly right. would. But it's a great thing that we are there to provide that service. It's a great thing, and it's yeah. great that all the churches come through and help support this and have made it grow so much just they, in the last years that you've been there. And they said that those churches that had the vision to start and help people in crisis, primarily you know, with the free medical clinic side, but then in 1995 when some medical people came and said, hey, we would like for you to have, get, put a free medical clinic under your umbrella. I don't think they had the vision at that time of how big this thing would get and be and what it would provide to the community for people in need of medical care. And uh, like I say, uh, it, it's just a, a, a real pleasant thing to see and to be a witness of and to see people come down the hall after they've stopped off to the pharmacy and picked up their medicine and go out with a smile on their face or just like the little kids that stand there with their mother or their dad while they're getting medication to help provide for them to keep them healthier so they can take care of the kids and same thing on the food side the crisis ministry side you know, we give food and these little kids get the biggest eyes because they get all this food and get to carry it away with mom and dad and so, uh, where even does though, the food come from, Dan? Well, the food is primarily donated for many of our member churches as well as organizations. I mean, we have uh, uh, a lot of different organizations out there. And then, of course, you know, I mentioned Bilo, who is basically the one on 25 North. Uh, the Bilo store over on 221 gives theirs to the food bank, but the, the Bilo store over on 25 North with Ted Boyd, the manager, uh, we pretty much get the, the funds and the food that is. Uh, raised through their store, we get that. And so when you consider the churches, you consider the business organizations that have food drives, some of the people over at the hospital have food drives, uh, some of the groups out there, the Boy Scouts, uh, different little organizations, some of the schools, uh, also their students that. will have food drives and, and give, them, give, them, give the food to us. So uh, through it all, we seem to have a fair amount of food all the time. It's like the Lord provides. And uh, when the demand is great, we seem to get the food to take care of the people. That's terrific. But we can always use more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would be nice to be ahead of the game, wouldn't it, Dan? We love to uh, have a blessing of have things out there, uh, inventories and, and medical supplies to take care of people when the need is there. Absolutely. Well, you know, you will be able to, from your from your own perch, to be able to be part of the 15th annual, Gracie, 15th annual Medicine Chase. The 5K run or one-mile walk is coming up on Saturday, April 27th at 9 o'clock. Registration is at 8 a.m. It is in Uptown Greenwood near the Water Fountain. All proceeds will benefit the Free Medical Dental Clinic. Uh, you can mail your form or, I guess, stop by and fill one out right there at, uh, at the uh, United Ministries. Sponsor forum deadline was uh, April 8th, but I guess it's not too late, is it? Uh, we can still, <laughs> we're, we're still taking any sponsors. We might not get their name on the back of the T-shirt, but uh, we are still always looking for sponsors, and we'd love for people to come through. And, of course, we hope the people that will come and register and be a participant and get a t-shirt and, and position themselves for some prizes there the day of the medicine chase. Absolutely. It's going to be a lot of fun. It is coming up, as I said, Saturday, April 27th. Hey, if you have any time that you'd love to get involved with an organization, this is very much one to consider. United Ministries, they're doing so much good stuff. Six hours, six hours a month is all it really takes. And I tell you what, 
at the end of the year, they have a great banquet that uh, celebrates their volunteers. And you definitely believe in taking care of your volunteers, yeah. don't you, Dave? Absolutely. <laughs> when they come, they get priority. Yes. Uh, if they have any questions or have a need, we give them priority. So we really try to treat our volunteers very well. Absolutely. So when you're looking for the best, check out United Ministries. You know, they're right there at 1404 Edgefield Street, right really across from the hospital. That's correct. Absolutely. Now, let's just go through when the free medical care is, your medical clinic, since you've added some extra times. Yeah, I just want to review that, and uh, we have the free clinic on Monday morning, mm -hmm. and then we have the free clinic, uh, another free clinic on Tuesday afternoon, and we have another free clinic on Wednesday morning, and we have a free clinic, which was our traditional one that started back in 1997 uh, on Thursday afternoons. And we have uh, a free medication refill program on Tuesday mornings. And then we also have a patient registration for the medical clinics and the dental care ministry on Wednesday afternoon from 2.30 until 4 o'clock. So that pretty much graphs out uh, just where things are as far as you know our clinic operation is concerned. And Gracie is uh, being very friendly with Dan right now. Hey, the number to call, 942-0500. That's correct, isn't it, Dan? That's correct. Okay, whether you want to volunteer, whether you want to find out more about the Medicine Chase, whether you need their services, 942-0500. This is WCRS right here in Greenwood. Executive Director Dan Flint, thanks so much for coming out today. Thank you, Anne. It's a pleasure, and appreciate the opportunity to talk about the ministry. Absolutely. Bye-bye, everybody. Hey, the news may not be working at 5, so we're going to hear Living the Country Life. Should be back working by tomorrow morning, though. Thanks so much. Bye-bye, everybody.